All right, what's up YouTube? We are back and uh, one more small video for uh, the Jazzmaster. Jazzmaster or Jaguar, it's the exact same tailpiece uh, floating trim assembly. Uh, this is off my 1991 Jazzmaster. Uh, I've got the exact same thing on the Cobain Jaguar. I'm not gonna take it apart to show you, just trust me, it is exactly the same. So what do we have here? Uh, it is basically the bit that is going to, if set up correctly, let you uh, have a floating bridge so that you can pull and dive bomb uh, with the uh, whammy bar. Which on uh, these older models, uh, just basically click in. It's solid enough that it won't just fall out, but uh, it's not a screw in. They've, uh, I think the 2017 uh, professionals, they start, they brought back the screw in basically. Uh, it's just more secure, but this will do the job. Like you can see here, it just kind of clicks in and it's fine. Not going anywhere. But anyway, uh, what is this and how does it work? Well, it is actually a lot simpler than what it looks like. Uh, from the top, all you're gonna see is uh -huh. this metal plate. You got a knob there, you got your uh, sleeve for the tram arm, and that's all you see, and then the bit at the back with the strings. Uh, inside, if we flip this over, super, super simple. You've got a, a screw with a nut of some kind here uh, that holds the spring on. This is the spring that is pushing this piece this way. Uh, to counterbalance because again like I keep saying for all trim system it's a bit of a balancing act and in this case it is balancing on let's see if we can get it this knife edge in here that you can see I'll take this apart fully in a second it'll be easier to see but basically it sits on that knife edge uh, the strings are pulling one way the spring is pushing the other strings push this which would bring this part down the spring is pushing up. Uh, if you can balance the pressure exactly between the spring and the strings, you end up with a floating bridge. Now, uh, this, like I said, is just a, uh, it's a little bit of a special nut, but it's basically just a nut. So we'll just go ahead and take this off by hand. It is with the screw that's right there. If you're having trouble, uh, just hold the screw. If it doesn't hold, just grab a Phillips head screwdriver and you can take this whole bit off. There you go. We've got the spring and the nut. Set that aside. We've got the screw. Set that aside. Don't lose either. They do sell replacements. These are not impossible to find, by the way. Sorry, I just had my dinner and I am a little bit burpy. Uh, there you go. So basically it's two separate pieces. We'll start with the top piece, what we see. Uh, there's basically three, a couple of pieces to this really. There's three main parts. You got your top plate, which is just a stamped piece of metal, fender logo, the patent number. And then into this, you can see there's loads of holes. You've got six holes to screw this into the body. Sorry, this thing is very, very shiny. So it's gonna just reflect a lot of light here. Uh, three screws here that are basically just there to hold the extra piece down here, which is our knife edge, which is what the other piece rests on and what uh, is creating the point of uh, the connection point basically between the two and what it balances on. And then up here, you've got a piece of metal on the bottom with the screw that connects to this knob on the top that slides back and forth freely if you set this thing up properly. Uh, if this doesn't move freely, it's not set up properly or it was set up for a specific uh, locking reason. Uh, the bottom piece is literally just two pieces of metal. Uh, bottom piece, I don't even know why, I guess it's just to thicken this up really. They could have just made it one piece, but I guess this was easier. Uh, and then the curve the holes for the strings at the back and the little sleeve for the trim arm. Nothing special, you just got like the uh, 
I don't know if this will actually show up, but it's kind of like, it's not going to show up. Anyway, it's kind of folded in slightly and it's cut into four pieces so that the uh, trim arm can click into that. But yeah, there you go. Uh, so that's it, nice and simple. Uh, whilst you have this apart, I would suggest greasing the contact points, uh, especially on this kind of thing, because you can tell this thing was starting to rust. Uh, I greased it up already. And then to put it back together, super simple. This just slides in like so, and then just let it kind of fall in. And there you go. Uh, what this piece is, the slidey, it is basically a lock. How it's intended to be used is, uh, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put this back together very quickly. Uh, when you're putting this back together, slide it down so that the uh, bottom piece is resting on it. Go ahead and screw your spring back in. Just gonna screw this in by hand, it's tight until it stays. There we go, that's probably enough. We will go through and show you how to adjust this fully and properly in a bit. I'm gonna need to put it back on the guitar and get the strings back on, obviously. But there you go, basically that lock is there uh, to prevent you from pulling back. Uh, if this is set up properly, even when it is locked, you can still dive bomb. Uh, but there you go, this is probably going to give you the idea right away. So what you want to do, if you're never going to use this and you just want this to be like a fixed tailpiece basically, slide the lock in no, anyway. Why? Why would you need to slide this in? Well, I had to take this apart because the guy that sold it to me had the lock all the way forward and he had tightened the hell out of that spring. Did it accomplish the fact that it was a hard tail? Yeah, I mean, you could still dive bomb if you really like pushed into it. The problem with that is you can see that's where the strings go through. Now, uh, I'm not gonna do it. <sighs> could I do it? I don't really wanna do it, but um, basically if this is forward and you screw the spring in so that this is all the way, this is going to be angled so far that way that there was no way to get the strings in. Uh, I had to dive bomb the thing by force and then pull the strings out with my other hand. It was a pain in the ass. Uh, so like I was saying, even if you don't want to use this and you want it as a hardtail, put the lock in place so that it is nice and parallel. You'll be able to use the, uh, you'll be able to get your strings in and out and then you can tighten the string to your heart's content. Uh, I wouldn't over tighten it anyway. That's not going to go anywhere. Uh, just don't put a, don't put the whammy in and don't dive bomb and you're pretty much set. Uh, if you do want to use this, uh, like I said, put the stopper in place no matter what, tighten it by hand so that it's not super tight, but, and uh, this is not going to work properly unless there's strings across because the uh, bar is only on one side. So if you're pushing down, it's just pushing down one side. But once you've got the string pressure, <clears throat> it's, going to even out and then you'll be able to. But anyway, uh, then the other thing too is uh, make sure these string, these strings, make sure these three screws are nice and tight. That's just holding on the uh, knife edge. If these start getting loose, your knife edge is not going to be aligned properly. Uh, but there you go. That's just the basics of it really. It's just uh, comes out to the same. I just think this is a better system personally. Uh, it's so much easier, especially cause you can just lock it. And then like I was saying, and I'll show you once I have it on the guitar and set up, uh, you can lock it back and forth if it's set up properly. So what I tend to do is if I'm not gonna use it, I just keep it locked. If I'm putting the guitar down for the day, for the night, whatever, I'm not gonna play it anymore. I'm done playing for the day, lock it. Uh, then when I pick it back up, uh, retune and then you can just slip that back and forth and you can use the whammy or not and yeah super super system personally because you it's got a built-in lock basically uh, but yeah I'm just going to uh, check that my screws they have been sitting here for 
I'd say about four hours now, three, four hours now. Uh, they should be pretty clean. So I'm going to go ahead, take these out, clean them up, put them on the guitar, and uh, then I'm going to finish showing you guys how to set up the trim. Alright, what's up YouTube? We're back. We've put the guitar back together. We've put our strings back on. And we've got our whammy bar. So, uh, what are we going to do? We are going to finish setting up the trim. What do you need for that? Well, like everything else, when you're working on a guitar, your tuner. Go ahead and make sure you are up to tune. Keeping in mind, your trim should still be nice and locked. So, tune up to whatever tuning you're going to be using. For me, it's E standard. One thing I'll say about this guitar, this thing stays in tune. It is a rock. It's great. So once you're in tune, uh, what you want to do is check if you can pull, pull, even though it's locked. Uh, this w should be the case because all we did was tighten it by hand if you are doing the same as me. Uh, if you're just trying to adjust something, maybe you can, maybe you can't doesn't matter. Uh, if you can pull back, uh, go ahead and tighten the screw that is right behind the lock. So that screw right there, tighten it a little bit. So lefty loosey, righty tighty, turn it to the right a little bit until uh, you notice that you cannot pull back anymore. Don't go further than that. You just want it to be sitting right on that lock. Go ahead and retune. Your string should be high now because you've tightened this. Uh, and then before we're done, one last thing we want to do. Check if you can slide this out comfortably. If you are following along and all you did was tighten it till it touched, you should be able to slide that out very easily. Double check your tuning. Now you might be a little bit high again, that's fine. and then check if you can re-engage the lock. You probably can't. So what you're going to need is, and I put my screwdriver away because I thought I was done. Your screwdriver, and go ahead and loosen the spring just a tad. So again, lefty loosey, until you can go ahead and bring that lock in push it back out. There should be just a little bit of a resistance when you're pushing the lock in. Go ahead and make sure you're tuned and then just double check. You should be able to lock and unlock very easily. So this might be a bit of back and forth, but it shouldn't be too bad. You should basically be right on it once you uh, get it so that you can lock and unlock. So there you go, you have a now have a trim that you can unlock when you want to actually use it. And when you are not using the guitar or you just don't want to use the trim, or even if you're just not going to use it or you just want to dive bomb, you have a trim that you can lock, but you can still use to dive bomb if you so choose. So there you go, that is how you set up a uh, trim. Uh, the other way you can do as well, and I guess I should have mentioned this, but if you uh, the first time get it uh, all the way tuned, and then what you can do is just uh, once it's locked, tune when you're sure that the spring is pressing against, unlock, 
and then uh, you can also just use the uh, adjustment screw here to get your guitar back into tune if you are know that it was tuned when it was locked. Those are the two ways of doing it. Uh, I've I use both ways. It just depends which one I think of doing when I'm working on it. But there you go. That is how you can set up your trim on a Jazzmaster or Jaguar. Exact same principle, exact same thing. Hopefully this helps someone. Uh, if it does, drop a like. Uh, if it doesn't, drop a like anyway. Hey, why not? Uh, but there you go. Uh, just kidding. All kidding aside, but there you go. That is how you set up a trim system on a uh, Fender Jaguar or a Jazzmaster.